Hey, I'm Lee, a cosmetic formulator. If you're new, welcome. If you're subscribed and returning, welcome back formulating friends. Today is all about technique, specifically what technique works best when formulating with xanthan gum. Also, be mindful that there's multiple grades of xanthan gum. All right, so I know you could possibly be thinking, why should I care about technique? Well, if you ever made a slurry with xanthan gum and place it into the water phase and then you notice like these huge chunks that look like boogers. Yeah, I know it's gross. I grow settle down or maybe you even notice like the xanthan gum hasn't fully dissolved or you resulted to a technique that causes too many air bubbles. So you probably use equipment like, you know, stick blender or milk frother and then suddenly your formula is full of air. So you try to wait it out a day or two for some of the air bubbles to dissolve. Well, Incorporating too much air can cause instability. Even if it appears to be gone, the air is still in the formula and this impacts the preservative. It can cause oxidation or other issues. And yes, we do use homogenizers to high share mixed gums. But with small samples like 100 grams or 200 grams, you should use hand mixing or use an overhead mixer because high share mixing just adds too much air into a formula. So now that I briefed you a little bit, I'm going to show you the technique that I've commonly seen used within a DIY community versus the technique that I actually recommend. Now looking at both of these samples I prepared, before we continue, let me know in the comment section which sample do you think I use the technique I recommend, the left or the right? And also a quick note, I am using a spatula today, but I do recommend a stainless steel whisk if you don't have an overhead mixer. So with the samples that I prepared today, I did only use three ingredients just in case you decide you wanted to practice it yourself. I'm going to leave it here on the screen and I am using water, glycerin as my humectant and xanthan gum as my reallergy modifier. Now if you don't have glycerin, you can substitute it for propanol or propylene glycol. Okay, so right now I am preparing sample A. The technique is to pour the xanthan gum into the glycerin, stir it well until you start to see a slurry form. And then once the slurry forms, then we'll add it into our water phase or phase A. All right, so this is what your slurry should look like. And now we're going to add it into the water. And when we add it into the water, we're going to hand mix it without high shear mixing because again, we don't want to add air into the formula. And I'm not going to use the overhead mixer just to show you by hand what it will look like. However, a stainless steel whisk will probably be more beneficial than a spatula once you start mixing. So as you can see, directly adding it into the water, there's these chunks inside of the water that will need some high shear mixing to get these clumps out. Otherwise, we'll be here all day trying to get them out. Okay, so now we're gonna start on sample B. Again, we're going to add the xanthan gum into the glycerin first to form our slurry. And then what we'll do differently this time is slowly add phase B or the slurry into the water phase. Okay, so this is where you want to take a bit of the slurry and slowly add it in a bit at a time. If you have an overhead mixer, you'll allow the mixer to mix and just slowly add it in. However, an overhead mixer will tend to mix a lot faster. Also, I'm going to speed through this just to show how I was doing it a couple of times 
so you don't have to sit here the whole time, but this is just so you can get the gist of what I'm doing. All right, so again, we are just repeating those same steps over and over again, slowly adding it in, and then you'll start to see the viscosity of the water begin to change and less clumping like we've seen in sample A. All right, after doing this repeatedly several times to incorporate the xanthan gum, we finally reached the end of sample B. Now, we're gonna take a look at both samples. Sample A is less viscous just based upon the xanthan gum sitting in the water and not being fully dispersed. And then we have a sample B that's a lot more viscous than sample A. I'm going to show you in multiple angles how different both samples are and then you can decide which technique you think will benefit your formula more. Alright, as you can see, sample A and sample B are very different. The technique and the method is equally important as the formula because you wanna make sure that you're developing a product or a sample that has stability and a great shelf life. Air can always come into a formula, but excess air, it can be an issue, especially in emulsions. So do not homogenize small samples because you'll find that you have an unstable product down the road. Now, the only time that air should be excessive is when you're producing a product like mousse or other formulations that need bubbles in this product look. Anyhow, if you found this video informative and if you like these types of videos, let me know in the comment section. I'd like to hear your feedback. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you soon.